So the question is, if you move from single-ended signaling to differential signaling, would the effects of RPDs go away? And if so, can you truly pump data signals at a very, very high speed through differential lines without worrying about the issues associated with the power distribution network? So let me try to answer some of these uh, questions through this segment, which is on differential signaling. So the objectives are to show the importance of RPDs even in differential lines and to get into our, uh, differential lines and try to explain this concept better, let me spend a little bit of time explaining the meaning of mixed mode parameters. What do they represent in the context of differential lines? And once again, through very simple examples, let me show you the importance of RPDs for differential signaling as well. So let me start by using the test vehicle that I showed you in the previous segment which was a microstrip to microstrip VR transition. So all that is different on the slide is that instead of using single-ended lines, I now have differential lines. So once again, it's a four metal layer test vehicle where the differential lines transition through VRs from the top to the bottom and once again, bottom to the top. And I forgot to mention earlier that the reason for having two VR transitions is that so that we can measure the response from the top side of the test vehicle. When you now transmit a differential signal through the microstrip differential line, you're basically sending a low to high transition on one and a high to low transition on the, on the line that is adjacent to it, and therefore you create currents flowing in opposite directions. But at the same time, since these lines are referenced to the power and the ground planes, you also create return currents flowing on the power planes, which are in directions that are opposite to each other. Now, if you design these differential lines well, where they are right next to each other with constant coupling between them, you can show that these two return currents that you have on the planes will actually cancel each other. Let us now look at what happens when that signal propagates through that via. No matter how hard you try, you will find that it is practically impossible to design very good differential vias. So therefore, when the signals or the signal currents passes through the two vias in opposite directions, you'll find that the displacement current that you generate between the voltage and the ground planes will seldom cancel each other. So since they do not cancel each other, what happens is you still create these cavity modes between the voltage and the ground planes uh, of the power distribution network, and that will cause the degradation in the signal waveform. So let me try to illustrate this through a very simple test vehicle. The test vehicle, as I said earlier, is identical to what I showed in the previous slide, previous segment, except that instead of single-ended lines, you now have differential lines. And if you look at the port placement, you have a port at the input end of the differential line, you have port two at the far end of the differential line, and you also have a port between the power and the ground planes in the vicinity of your uh, VR transition. So you can now use a vector network analyzer to measure the response at all of the, these three ports as a function of frequency. So let us make that measurement, and what I'm going to do is to focus on the energy that is being coupled between port one and port three. What this represents is the amount of energy that is leaking into the power and ground planes as you send the signal from port one to the far end of the microstrip line. Now, the y-axis in this graph represents the level of coupling you would see, so the higher the value in dB, the larger is the coupling. And the x-axis represents your frequency. I show three curves over here. The black curve is what we did in segment number three. That corresponds to single-ended signaling. And as you can see, you can see of the order of around minus 20 to minus 15 dB of coupling. And that basically causes a degradation in the waveform when you go from the input to the far end of the microstrip line. 
If you look at the red curve, that is the case when you have differential lines without any VR transitions. So these are what I call as the ideal differential lines. And since they are routed right next to each other with no VR transition, there is hardly any loss of energy from the microstrip line into the power and the ground planes. The third curve is your blue curve, and that corresponds to the differential VR to VR transition that I showed earlier. And as you can see, the level of coupling you would see over here between the differential line and the power and ground planes is quite significant of the order of around minus 30 dB or so, which means that these differential lines are no longer ideal. And this coupling is what causes a reduction in the energy that can propagate from the input end of the microstrip line to the far end. So the bottom line over here is even with differential lines, the minute you have a lot of these discontinuities that make the differential li lines non-ideal, you cannot ignore the effect of RPDs because their effect becomes very significant.